Hello, this is Jeff Ronald from Leica Geosystems in Houston, and today we're going to go over setting up a GS18 with a micro SIM card in the GS18 sensor. Uh, the reason we're going to do this is we know uh, AT&T is transitioning away from 3G. The neat thing is the 18 GS18 um, has an LTE and 4G modem in the actual sensor. So if you're using an older CS20 that's CDMA or 3.7G, next year that, then that will be an issue. And this is a quick way and an inexpensive way to get a micro SIM card 4G capable in the sensor to get, get you on the 4G platform. So first we'll talk about the SIM card, how we physically order it and how we physically put it in the GS18. And what's really critical is you have to have a GAT27 antenna. Um, it will not work without the antenna. So we'll, we'll talk about what port to plug that in to get it to work. And then we'll go over two different options. We'll go over the Smart Connect SIM card, which is 4G based off the of AT&T that we can order through SmartNet. We'll talk about the advantages of that. Then we'll talk about the LTE uh, Verizon option. <clears throat> then we'll take a look at a video, some basic configurations to set up the GS18. Okay. So first off on the GS18, uh, if we pop off the battery compartment, there's a slot that slides in the SD card and right above it is a slot that that's where the micro SIM card will slide in. Okay. So that's just a schematic of the GS18. <clears throat> if we take a look, we ordered this card from Smart Connect. We popped it out of the credit card. This card is all white. That way we know it's Smart Connect. It's got the AT&T emblem, it says AT&T. What's really important that what I'm trying to show here is there's one little template or one little um, <clears throat> ring that we got to snap on and that, that makes it big enough to fit into the GS18. It's around 15 millimeters long. Okay. That's very important. Otherwise it could slide in and, and uh, get lost in GS18. So make sure you have that first ring snapped. So on the GS18, <clears throat> if we pop off the battery cover. There's the SD card slot right above it. We just pop in the micro SIM card. So the contacts facing up onto the top of the sensor. So the at and emblem would be facing down and look at that little icon and we'll put the little uh, indentation Pentagon chip uh, to the right hand side. <clears throat> As I said earlier, um, <clears throat> it's important that the GAT27 antenna is plugged in. This is really critical. So here's a part number for the GAT27. Um, we got to order that. Some guys will order a spare antenna. I just have a spare one. Some guys will paint that antenna pink or put some uh, pink tape on it. So if it falls out, then they can find it in, in the shrubs. <clears throat> so if you notice, um, there's two ports in the GS18, the 4G that it has got to go in here. This will not work without that antenna plugged in. Very critical. This other port over here shows a radio. That's where your radio antenna goes for the radio. So it's very important to plug in the GAT27 into the 4G port. All right, so we're going to have a Smart Connect SIM card through SmartNet. It's 4G and 3G capable. That's that's very critical. Um, so we're trying to get on the 4G platform. It's, it's an AT&T card. Key thing in here is the APM, lowercase case sensitive M2M005125.attz. zero zero five one two five dot ATTZ. When we order off SmartNet, we'll specify a micro SIM small card. Um, that's what we need to go into the GS18. Be tied to your SmartNet subscription. Will be set up correctly. Drop ship it. You don't have to go to the AT&T store, especially with COVID-19. That could be a health risk. The other neat thing is with the Smart Connect card, we you know it's set up correctly. It's, it's both hold and after. So we had one client that used an AT&T card near the Mexico border, and uh, they got some fallacious cell phone bills. Um, this will be covered, and you don't have to worry about that. Whether it's near Canada or Mexico, hop on those cell towers. <clears throat> and once again. We're using this to try to get on the 4G platform to prepare for the phase out of 3G by AT&T. Okay. So it's really critical. And it's just a really nice feature of the GS18 is to allow us to do this. If we have the older CS20 3.7G. All right. So it's also possible the internal modem is LTE as well. So you could put a Verizon SIM card in the GS18. Key thing here is we have to find the IMEI number. And how do we find that is we, when we find the IMEI number, we push that to Leica support. They push it to Verizon, so it's in their system. And um, it's really critical for activating the SIM card through Verizon. <clears throat> if you register your GS18 on MyWorld, 
and go to my products and you'll see the red box here will show the IMEI number of that GS18. That's the number we're going to provide. Or if you have the CS20 Bluetooth, just go to settings, seven about captivate, then click on the GS sensor tab and scroll down. The IMEI number is listed right there. Supply that to Verizon. Now, once again, Verizon is going to have a different APN. Once again, it's case sensitive. The APN is going to be VZ WinterNet. It's really VZW Internet, but VZ WinterNet is an easy way to remember that. And that's what we type in. So we'll show you how to type in on the next video um, the APN. All right. So now at the CS20, this is already set up. So let's just go through the settings and show you how we set it up. So we're, right now we're Bluetooth to the GS18. So let's talk about how we uh, Bluetooth. We're going to hit Settings, Connections, and then we'll go to GS Connection Wizard. And we'll pick the GS18. We'll hit the Next button. And we're going to do Bluetooth. We'll hit Next. In this case, uh, the serial number pops up. But if this was a brand new setup, we'd hit the search button, F4, search, and find the, the Bluetooth serial number. Okay? Now, right now, we're on the internet. So the at sign comes up, and there's no, if there's a yellow triangle, means you're off the internet. There's no bars when you have the GS18 hooked up. So if we have the SIM card in the GS18, there's no bar signal strength. This is really critical. We have to have the GS18 on in order to be on the internet. So if you're FTP in data, the GS18, just treat it like a mobile hotspot, it's got to be on. And once again, if there's no yellow triangle, it means you're on the internet. So that's a really key icon to look at. Okay. All right. So there's the ad sign. <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll hit settings. And then we'll take another look at the work style. So right now I've got, I'm using work styles. So right now I've got a work style called One IMAX version 4.1 GS. And I can create another one called One Near. And I'll use the, the work styles to switch from an IMAX to a Near. And what we'll do now is we'll take a look at the settings to set up the IMAX network correction. Okay. So we'll hit settings, connections, or the connections. And what's really important is the first tab is CS connections. And right now, um, the CS connections we want totally disabled because we're running under the GS connections. We're going to set everything up under the GS connections. This is really important. Okay. So I hit the CS connections. You'll see how if we pause, the CS internet is blank. If this was activated and you had an old SIM card, I'll pop the SIM card out and we hit F3 edit and uncheck this box to disable the CS internet. We do not want to use the, try to get the internet over the CS controller. Okay. So that's really important. So once again, we'll click on the GS connection tab up here and the first screen so this is where we're going to set up both the internet and our RTK network corrections via the GS connections because everything's going through the GS18 sensor now. So we're going to highlight the RTK rover and then we're going to hit F3 edit. Okay. And when we hit F3 edit, we're going to look at the first screen. So under RTK data, receive data, we're going to check it, say yes, connect using really important GS internet number one. If this was CS Internet number one, it'd look for the controller. So it's really important that we have GS Internet number one. It's an important setting. And the RTK data type is going to be RTCM3 if we're using SmartNet. Okay, so that's the first tab, RTK data tab. And there's our RTCM3. We'll hit the we'll tab over to RTK network. And in this case, we're going to click and say, yes, we're going to use RTK network. And the network type is going to be IMAX. When we do a near, we can arrow down and select the nearest. And that's the IMAX network correction. Okay, we'll hit OK. And what's important is under the RTK rover is now configured. We'll hit F4 uh, control. And what that will do is it'll pull up our network. So we have a server to use, and we call it Texas SmartNet JR and the mount point. So we're going to click on the server to use and edit these settings to take a look at that server. So I click, hit F3 edit, <clears throat> and on the first page, there's my name. I call it Texas SmartNet JR for Jeff File. The address is tx.smartnetna.com. If you're in a different state, then you change the TX to like LA for Louisiana, and the port is 10,000. 
The next tab over here is Mtrip. That's where we type in our username and password that's supplied through SmartNet. Okay, so all those settings are correct. We'll hit the Mtrip tab. And in this case, I typed in, I said, yes, we can use Mtrip. My Mtrip user ID is here. I unchecked the display password. You can do it, but that's where you type in your password. I just don't want to show you my password right now. And then we hit the store button. And that way we got all the internet connectivity. If this was TextDoc, then we type in the IP username and password for, for TextDoc. Okay. And <clears throat> we'll hit OK. And now the next thing is we're going to pick the Ntrip mount point. So Ntrip is a buzzword for network correction. MSN IMAX is the, the mount point. MSN means GNSS data. So if you want to get corrections for your GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, Beidou, you've got to select the MSN source table. And that's hidden F5 source at the bottom. So we'll click on here. And that's already set up, but we hit source. We're on the internet. You're going to be on the internet to, to do this. So it spins for a little while and it goes to where that IP was. And it's then you have a list that you can choose from. And we pick the MSN IMAX. <clears throat> okay. So now we, under GS connections, we first set up the RTK rover, all the settings there. Once again, it's GS internet number one. We scroll down to GS internet. This is really important because this is how we're going to look for the modem where the SIM card is placed. Okay. So we'll hit F3 edit. Let's pause here. We're going to, under the internet tab, we're going to say, right, use internet, check that box, connect using GS modem. And our device is Criterion PLS 8. Now, a lot of times when you first set it up, it won't default to this device. And we have to hit the F5 device button to select that. You might see a bracket that says GS modem and it's not set up. Okay. Um, if you have an older firmware version, like version 4, this might say 2G GS modem. Don't worry, it's just, um, it, they corrected that in the next firmware. It should have said GS modal, okay? So if you see the brackets, we've got to hit the device button and select that criterion PLS8, okay? So we hit next. It shows the GS modal criterion. And how do we set that up? We hit the device key. And this is what you might have seen before. If we back it up here, you might have seen you might have seen this GS modem here and it won't work. So we've got to hit the device, F5 device, and select that PLS. If you can see here, it says LTE. That's the device driver to activate that LTE 4G modem. Okay, so we hit OK. <clears throat> it's assigned to the GS modem. And now, um, when that's assigned, we'll hit the F4 control, and that's where we put in the APN. So remember the APN for Verizon was VZ Winternet and the APN for SmartNet was the M2M. So if we hit control, in this case, we had the M2M 005125.attz lowercase, and we hit OK, and we hit OK there. All right, all right, and that's how we activated it. We're hooked up for Bluetooth right here to the GS18, that's critical, and then we're on the internet. There's no bars, but there's no triangle, that means we're on the internet, okay? All right, so let's take a look. We've got our job, and if I click on the, the modem, I can say connect, start streaming data, and trip connects. The arrow will start pumping after 20 seconds, and the 1D and 2D will start counting down, and then the check marks come up for smart check, then it'll fix. If I click on the modem and go to RTK data link status, this then shows me um, how many GPS, nine, L1, L2, this five is L5, that's triple frequency. GLONASS has two frequencies, so it's six. Galileo has four frequencies. That's what we're showing right here. So right now, the E1, E5, the Altbach is their version of L5. So we have four Altbach, five L5, that gives us nine on the triple frequency. And the data is coming in every one second. That's really critical. Okay. And, um, and that just shows that we're through, we're getting data with a network correction. It's pumping in. We can hit the cell phone again, hit st stop streaming data that hangs up, hit star, work style wizard. I'll switch to near. Let's take a look at the near settings. So I can quickly switch, keeps me on the internet, and we'll do the same process. And look at the settings. So hit settings. OK. 
Okay. Settings. Connections. Or the connections. And once again, we're going to go over to the GS Connection Wizard. And we'll hit the first RTK rover. Once again, it's GS Internet 1, RTCM3 data, just like we had before. We'll go to the RTK network. In this case, it's checked. We have nearest, not IMAX. Okay. And then we'll hit OK and hit Control, server mount point. And now it's MSN near is the source table. Okay, that's critical. Once again, we'll go down to GS Internet, same as before, GS modem, criterion, and it's got the same uh, APM. Okay. So now if we dial in, we click on the icon, hit start streaming data. The air will start pumping in. <clears throat> Our CQs will go down. Once again, we're on the internet. If I click on RTK Daylink status, once again, it's RTCM version 3. There's our satellites. At the bottom, it says RTK network is nearest. Okay. We pack that up real fast. And then you can see and that's how you know if you're on nearest or an IMAX. So we'll click on the cell phone, RTK Daylink status. We'll scroll down below all the satellites, and you see it says nearest right there. Hit OK. If I had IMAX, it'd say IMAX at the bottom. All right. Okay, and now we're fixed, we're pumping data, we're on the internet, and that's a quick overview on how to set up the GS18 using the micro SIM card in the head. And hope you found that beneficial. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to give me a call or like a support at 1-800-327-4773, or you can contact uh, myself at 713 516 5446 and here's my email. Thanks for paying attention. I uh, hope you found that beneficial.